Hey guys, Dylan from the Geek Duo here, and today I'll be bringing you my reaction to Ruby Ice Queendom Episode 7, titled Dreams Come Root. With advice from Team Juniper, Penny, and Sun, Ruby's party decides to try a new plan. Along with Jean, who had acquired immunity from the nightmare, the four sneak into Weiss's dream. Using the train they had rescued from the White Fang, they were able to approach close to the center of the Empire. Jon, not being affected by the nightmare, was able to move freely. And that's all I'm going to say. So, it seems that they're going to completely disregard everything that Shion said, and they're going to make changes to the dreamscape. Because, well, she said, Ruby tried to, well, was going to rescue the train the first time, and she's like, don't do that, don't change anything. You could make things worse, but then again, with that dust reaching the city, could put it in, in a more positive light, considering that's one of the things that is always brought up with something that's wrong with Weiss's rule and all that. So, who knows? Uh, let's get this started in 3, 2, 1, go. Also, I have no idea why the synopsis of this show is so spoilery. Hmm. How did you get buried? Is he really? Yes, he is tobogganing on his shield. Nope. You do realize you've got your normal sword as well, mate. Why does he have his normal sword? I didn't notice whether it was there when he was first pulled out, but... Um... Honestly, with all, with the opinion that Weiss holds towards Jean at the start of the show, I'm surprised that's all he's got going against him in this, um, land. That just that his weapon's way too unwieldy.
the hell was that? <laughs> He's really blundering his way through. Open the gate. No, I was expect wasn't expecting this long a wait. <sighs> Interesting. So it did. How did that manage to reach you? I mean, to be fair, all of this is her, so I guess. Yeah, that makes sense. All of this is built by her subconscious, and there should be a part that's trying to overcome it, so. Makes sense that they'd be able to reach her just by shouting out to the void. How annoying would it be to work in one of those buildings? Just all of a sudden your entire thing just starts shifting. Even the shadow people have to move out of the way.
And why is there what looks to be a fair at the station? You know, the fact that Weiss is German inspired really does make some of these things worse. Yeah, and you're not going to do that by listening to your father. I was thinking the same. You know, it wouldn't be so bad if I stayed for a little.
Of course, um, why this childlike innocence would be regarded as a silly. So is that meant to be a Jean relic or a Yang relic? Because Ruby's was red, Weiss is white, and he did make note that it was Team Ruby's. So. I can't get over the army of Chad Weiss's, just... I was one of them shorter than the others. What happens if either Whitley or Winter get hit by one of those young Weisses? What the hell?
the hell? Almost looked like, yeah. She protected them. What the hell is going on? What the fuck was that ending? <laughs> okay, um... <sighs> well... So, the parts of the synopsis I didn't read are... So I got up to John not being affected by the nightmare was able to move freely. Releases the sillies. The residents of the dream who were locked away by the Empire and succeeded in obtaining a new relic. Suddenly, a large number of little Weisses jump out. So, yeah. Like the majority of the second half of this episode. What the hell happened at that end? With that ending though, like... So... Obviously... Now that... This is just my interpretation of it. The reason that Team Juniper and her childlike innocence and all of that were locked away was to protect them from being infected by this nightmare. And now that they've been released and are actively working against the nightmare, suddenly it is acting out and attacking them, infecting them, which is why all of a sudden, Ren and Nora, who are the ones actually doing all the fighting in that, got overcome by the vines. And why all the um, childlike innocence started going on a rampage and everything was because they were being affected too. Whereas Pira, she wasn't actively doing anything. In fact, she was being seen as helping something that is not able to be seen as a target by the nightmare. So she didn't get infected. She's still seen as on its side, I guess. But that doesn't explain why all the paladins and um, Ren and Nora were trying to encircle... Um, John and Pira. Nor does it explain why Nega Weiss um, of decided to save them. Hmm. Also, she turned um, Big Nicholas, the statue, into a um, combat thing with six arms that is able to defend itself from anyone who gets close. She didn't know that the rest of her team were up there, but 
it seemed to be able to instinctively keep them away, so... Anyway, um... This show is both hilarious and weird. Like, it goes places. Like, see all the child vices and what was being provided for all the sillies and all of that. Like, she really did try to give them the best outcome that she thinks someone who is silly would like, which is basically a fairground full of a bunch of nice food, it's nice and warm, they've got attractions and everything in there. And, yeah, so she's really trying to do the best for people that she keeps at an arm's length. Even subconsciously. And her team, except for Blake, who, as we know, as this was hap as she was being infected and everything, is when she learned about Blake being a faunus and everything. So, that probably also got made worse by the fact that she was currently infected by the nightmare as she was learning this, as she was dealing with all those um, emotions from the revelation and all of that. So, that would explain why Yang and Ruby were still being kept close and locked up in their dorm room right in the center whereas Blaze got shafted outside had she not learned about Blake being a foreigner, Blake probably would have also been locked up in the dorm room right in the center. Hmm. Interesting. Um. But, yeah, that's all that there is with the last episode. It was funny. Like, what? Why did Jean get two weapons? Is it, is him having his regular weapon a part of his immunity from the um, nightmare? Because he still had the super unwieldy sword that his counterpart would have, yet he also has his regular weapon, which seemed to work pretty much the same as it normally did. At least with the whole, you can take the sword out, you can expand the shield, that's all it's able to do. So, not really much for her to misconstrue. Is him having that as a secondary weapon part of his immunity? Hmm, who knows? Anyway, um, I'm going to end this one here. I'll catch you in the next one.